seven day mental diet challenge. I'm your gay guru, Michael Brewer, here on the south shore of the beautiful island of Kauai in Hawaii. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Hope you're doing well too. Here on Kauai, of course it's kind of easy to stay positive, but even here I'm feeling challenged, especially today. And so I want to go into that challenge with you a little bit, and that is what do you do when you're feeling positive but you're affected by the people around you, especially your partner, or your wife, or your husband, or your family, or your co-workers, or your friends. What if you're the only one that's on the mental diet? Or, would even, or even in my case, I'm lucky my partner Rainbow is doing it with me. But still, you know, everyone's got their moods, and everyone, you know, you, you, get, you identify so closely with people and then you notice that their mood isn't quite the same as yours or you tend to go along if they say a negative thing. Like yesterday, we sat in a restaurant. And here we are in beautiful Kauai and a nice lady, old lady mate, waitress came and I said, oh, isn't it beautiful here? And she said, oh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> and she went on to tell us all these horrible stories about Hawaii and Kauai and the big hurricane and how the island has just gone downhill and it's not the same. And, Boy, if we'd gone along, if we'd let ourselves go along with that negativity, we would have ruined our whole holiday. And so, if a full of stranger can have that effect on our mood and our vibration, just imagine the power and tug that your partner has, or your wife, or your best friend, or the, someone you really like. You know, and, you, and I don't think we even notice it if you're with someone and they suddenly say something negative about what you're doing or what's happening. You almost automatically go along with it because you want to be friends and you want to be close to them. And so that's a bit of a challenge here, especially if you do it on a seven-day mental diet. And I even noticed it today with my partner Rebo. Uh, one of us got a little bit maybe irritated or something uh, for a few seconds and the other one kind of reacted to it. So how do you protect yourself like with an invisible veil from the vibrations and the energy of those around you, you really almost have to do that. You have to say, look, I'm responsible for my own vibration, my own positivity or negativity, and no matter who, not if it's my wife or my husband or my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my lover or anyone, they cannot affect your vibration. You have to decide that to do that for yourself. Decide to stay positive, no matter what. And it's not easy, believe me, I noticed it today. Uh, you really can set each other's off, especially loved ones, because they know all the buttons to push. They know exactly what nerves you. And I think sometimes when people who maybe aren't doing the seven day mental diet or aren't aware of these things, see you trying to be positive, unconsciously or even consciously, they try to push those buttons even more. So you have to be vigilant really vigilant. So that was the lesson for today is um, how to deal with the vibrations of those around you, not necessarily strangers, but them too, and especially those who you're close to. And for a little inspiration, let me read a little bit more from Emmett Fox, what he has to say. You must train yourself to choose the subject of your thinking of any given time. Also, to choose the emotional tone of what we call the mood that colors it. Yes, you can choose your moods. Indeed, if you could not, you would have no real control over your life at all. Moods, habitually entertained, produce the characteristic disposition of the person concerned, and it is his, his dis disposition that finally makes or mars a person's happiness. Well, that was kind of 1935 talk. Uh, it put it in today's language, it would say that it starts with controlling your moods. We all, I mean, how many times have we all said, oh, I can't help it, I'm just in a bad mood, or I'm just in an unhappy mood, or I'm just in a mood. Well, isn't a mood just a thought you choose to, to think and then to rethink and to keep thinking? Don't we have control over our moods? I mean, is, are we really helpless to the moods we have, or can we decide to change the mood we have? Can we decide to just start thinking other thoughts, or to distract ourselves, or to do something, anything, to get out of that mood? Well, according to Emmett Fox and Tony Robbins and others who have done this before, yes, we can change our moods, and there are tools to do that. Home pivoting, or using your body. Uh, do something to get yourself out of anything, distract yourself. 
And it's important you do so because a mood, if you can keep staying in it, will determine your disposition to come to habitual. Disposition will eventually attract to you things unwanted. If you're perpetually in a bad mood, well, it just follows you like a dark storm cloud and you attract more things to you to attract even more stuff to prove that you should be in a bad mood. So it's kind of a never-ending chain of pain, a circle of never-ending sorrow and despair. So it's really, really important that we do control our moods and not let the people around us control them for us. You cannot be healthy, you cannot be happy, you cannot be prosperous if you have a bad disposition. If you are sulky or surly or cynical or depressed or superior or frightened half out of your wits, your life cannot be possibly worth living. Well, that's pretty strong, but I guess he's trying to make a point. Unless you are determined to cultivate a good disposition, you may as well give up all hope of getting anything worthwhile out of life. And it is kinder to tell you very plainly that this is the case. I know that's really strong, but he means well. If you are not determined to start it now and carefully select all day the kind of thoughts you are going to think, you might as well give up all hope of shaping your life into the kind of thing you want it to be, because this is the only way. So it starts one thought at a time. It starts one pivot at a time. As soon as you feel that negative thought, you've got to decide to think something else and not to stick with it. This is not to say you can't have negative thoughts, because you can't avoid it in this world, in this day and age. They're going to come along, we should train into it. But the point is not to let them stay. The point is not to hold on to them more than 30 seconds. It only takes, it only takes about 30 seconds to hold on to a thought before it starts manifesting in your life. So that's a, thoughts are powerful, powerful things. So, I guess that's about enough for today. I hope you're doing well and I hope you'll write to me or send me videos and let me know how you're doing. And if you haven't started Mented, a 7 Day Mental Challenge, watch the videos here on YouTube that I've placed and start over and let me know what your experiences are. Make your own videos. This, I'm not the only one who owns this process. This is any, Anybody can do this and everybody should do this. So, signing off from the beautiful island Kauai, Aloha!